Hi there, this is a video presentation of our Solitude project, while Solitude stands for Safety Arguments for Learning-Enabled Autonomous Underwater Vehicles. In this project, we are interested in autonomous missions conducted by underwater vehicles. For instance, we simulated in Gazebo an autonomous inspection and survey mission conducted in a water tank, shown in the right-hand side window. From the top left window, you may see this underwater mission is following several waypoints and terminates with autonomous docking. There are six simulated objects in the water tank. They are pipe, gas tank, gas canister, oil barrel, floating ball and the docking cage. The underwater vehicle needs to accurately and timely detect them during the mission. Notably, the mission is also subject to random noise factors, so that repeated missions will generate different data processed by the learning-enabled components. The top claim of our safety assurance case is that the AUV is acceptably safe. By acceptably safe, we mean all safety-related requirements should be satisfied. The set of safety requirements implying sufficiently safe should be explicitly defined and validated. Typically, they are derived from safety and hazard analysis, domain-specific safety standards, etc. While in our case study, we conduct the hazard analysis to identify hazards and their mitigations, so that a set of safety properties can be defined as requirements. Those requirements should be validated by common risk acceptance criteria and principles in safety regulations of different countries or industry domains, like as low as reasonably practicable and globally at least equivalent. For our underwater missions, a potential way of validating some quantitative requirements is to refer to human divers' performance. As you will see, our main focus at this stage is the reliability claim on the deep learning classification function. Therefore, an inevitable step is to break down the whole system level risk to lower component level requirements for which we build a novel reliability assessment model. Our reliability assessment model is based on statistical testing evidence collected in repeated missions. In this clip, we are showing five repeated missions in which we can observe the images of objects collected in those dynamic missions are different because of the random noise factors. In this way, a large number of missions is simulated for collecting the statistical data, based on which we do reliability assessment modeling. The reliability model for deep learning classifiers is essentially implementing a conceptualized equation of, deep learning reliability should be the product of its generalizability and robustness. Because, first, software reliability is a user-centric property that depends on how the software will be operated. So in the assessment, we need to consider how the deep learning generalizes to a new data point, according to the operational profile. Second, it is known that deep learning models are subject to robustness issues, so considering the robustness evidence in reliability assessment is necessary. While omitting important modeling details, our reliability assessment model essentially consists of four main steps, based on which we develop the probabilistic safety arguments. In step one, we partition the whole input space into small cells, and argue the partition is rigorous in terms of following the partition rules and assumptions. Then we approximate the operational profile of each cell and argue the results are sufficiently accurate. In step 3, we estimate the robustness to the ground truth label of each cell, and we need to collect evidence to support the claim that those robustness estimates are accurate. Finally, the reliability metric of our interest, the probability of misclassification per input, can be rewritten as a weighted sum of cell unrobustness, where the weights are the operational profiles of cells. For this assembling step, we need to argue it is efficient and effective in terms of minimizing the compound reliability assessment errors, propagated from individual estimates at the cell-wise level. The animation on the left is showing the approximated operational profile, projected into a 2D space, as more and more operational data, i.e. images of the objects is collected from the statistical testing. 
while, on the right-hand side, the robustness evaluation evidence of the small cells are shown as a scatter plot. As aforementioned, the reliability metric PMI is then the sum of products on both types of estimates at the cell-wise level. This plot is showing the reliability claims stated in PMI. We may observe the result starts to stabilize and converge as more and more statistical data is collected. Such PMI claim forms the top claim in our safety arguments for lower level DL components. Thank you for your attention. Please refer to our Solitude project website for more technical details, source code, deep learning models, datasets and publications.